Okay, so here we are again. Um, we're now looking at the sort of most important equation for tomorrow, which is this one, that velocity is the change in distance over the change in time. Um, this delta is a fancy uh, Greek letter that just means change. Mathematically speaking, delta x formally is the final x, the last position, minus the initial position. And a lot of times we don't even need to bother with calculating it because we just know it intuitively ourselves. For instance, in this case that we just keep repeating, in the 100 meter race, we know that the delta position, the change in x, is going to be 100 meters without really even thinking about it. But if we needed to, we could see that it was still formally true because delta x is equal to the final position minus the initial position. And the final position is 100 meters, and the initial position is 0. 100 minus 0 is 100. We get that our delta x is equal to 100. No worries. But we're going to run into this uh, in a couple other spots, particularly when it comes to time. For instance, in the last video, when we talked about um, maybe this region, this blue region. In this blue region, in this particular part of the line, we've gone from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. And so there, we know that that total distance, or excuse me, that total time is 5 seconds. And that's the change in time. So we'll get to that in a second. So uh, what we want to see is we've picked some times here, 13 seconds, 26 seconds. Um, student A is the fast student, and student B is the slow student, which we determined in the last video. So let's try and find the exact velocity of student A and student B. So the exact velocity for student A is going to come from the formula. So let's do it uh, a couple of times here. Um, we're going to shrink my 26. No, we're not. Lovely. OK. So first, the first one with student A. We need to find the velocity. And we need to make sure that we use the right equation. We could do it in our brains if we wanted, but we'd have to show our work. So we copy our equation of v equals delta x over delta t. We know that delta x is 100 meters, because that's how far they ran. That's what we see on this poorly labeled, excuse me, pardon me, position axis. And we know that our delta t is what? Well, this is pretty simple because it's, it's given it to us. We have option here for uh, this line, or we have this option for this line. That's all we got. And we know that the student a is the fast student, so we're going to go with t equals 13 seconds. All right. Now we just plug and chug like we've done a million times before. V equals 100 divided by 13 seconds. I don't know how to do that in my brain. So we'll look on a calculator. And that answer is 7.69 meters per second. And in our example, just to sort of visualize that, in class in the front of the room, we had uh, the walls, the boards, and we had some meter sticks laying down. Seven meters in a second would correspond to basically crossing the entire classroom uh, in one second. So pretty, pretty fast. Um, but you can only get to that speed when you're, when you're really sprinting. So let's do one more example. And that one more example is this one right here. Well, nope, this one right here of 26 seconds. It shouldn't be too scary for us because we're just going to repeat the same process. I could literally copy and paste it and change the numbers. In fact, why don't we? Copy and paste. All we're doing 
is we're looking for the numbers that changed. And in this second scenario for B, um, we can see that the position, the change in position is the same. I should use a different color because we're still going to 100 meters, but this time we're going in 26 seconds instead of 13 seconds. So really the only thing that changed is this and this. So we can erase that, erase that, erase that, and we just changed our time. 26 seconds, 26 seconds, and then now we get 100 divided by 26, which instead is 3.85 rounded meters per second. And this serves as a numerical confirmation of what we said in the last video. We said in the last video that a shallow line was slower and a steeper line was faster. Well, here we go. We've got a steep line, which ends up corresponding to 7 meters per second, and a shallow line, which ends up corresponding to 3. So we can clearly see numerically, as well as in terms of our physical understanding, the shallow line is going to be the line that is slower. Great. So now um, we've gone through our four examples of different ways that we can have position versus time graphs. Then we've talked about uh, individual calculation examples that were based on graphs. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to synthesize them. So there was one particular problem, and I don't know if I'll walk through an entire new problem. Um, no, well, I'll walk through an entire new problem.